Pangaea is essentially born as an, a material science company, trying to sort of tackle the biggest environmental footprints of the fashion space or luxury or, or not luxury lifestyle products, which always lies in the material sourcing and the processing of materials for any industry. And uh, we came about thinking, you know, if we make better input, we could make, we could transform industries. And we started in the apparel fashion sector. Um, and as the phone didn't just automatically ring, we decided, you know, let's make a brand so we can showcase the material science. Um, and now the brand is bigger than the material science part of the business, but it's still what we're rooted on. It's still where we put investments. It's still where we evolve. And we're constantly surveilling the market for new innovative solutions. Some of them are like super high tech and exciting, mimicking spider protein and making fibers out of that or sequestering carbon and turning that into prints or sunglasses or, but it's also looking at like super natural solutions. Like how can we source cotton with less input by making it regenerative, which means that you don't extract from nature, but you keep nature in balance and biodiversity as you um, produce the, vi the, the vi virgin fibers. But it could also be looking at how can we take waste streams from, for instance, fruit and plant fibers from food industry and turn that into um, new textiles or seaweed, which is also naturally resourced, or Himalayan nettle, who you wouldn't think you would ever wear in your body, but you can if you treat it the right way. You can make incredible denim. So it has a full range of sort of as the most blue sky thinking high tech to the best solutions for natural sourced fibers. Yeah, so internally we have um, an R&D team, so research and development, but also an impact team. And they, of course, work very closely together because there might be new innovative solutions that are not necessarily, you know, has the right footprint environmentally. Um, but we're following that very, very closely. And the R&D team, to some extent, we have our own proprietary IPs that we keep developing but they're also on a constant sort of search for what's new, what's coming, what can we do to replace the biggest sort of most harmful pillars in the fashion space. If you look at the fashion space, 60% of um, the, the materials are sourced from fossil fuel based. So that means they come from oil. And even if you can, in fact, recycle um, polyester, for instance, it still is polyester. It's still a plastic. It will still shred microfibers that will end up in the oceans, inside fish, inside all of us. Um, so we need to look at that for one pillar. You know, how can we find other solutions? There's also all, all of the um, animal-based materials like leather, which has been developed a lot over the past years with different kinds of mushrooms leather or cactus leather or lab-grown leather. And it's super exciting to see what's emerging. And now it's coming to a stage where they don't even need to add PU, so plastic, to, to the compositions. So we can have some that is actually also biodegradable. And then, of course, cotton, which might seem to people like, a, oh, cotton must be great. It's a natural fiber. But really, it's a really difficult fiber from an environmental perspective. It's very land-intensive. It's highly water-intensive. It's a very, very thirsty crop and there's used a high amount of pesticides which is killing bees and pollinators and by you know killing biodiversity so we do need to look at those sort of main areas of problem areas um, in the fashion space and see what well, how can we find better solutions and some of them are sits with people who have scientists backgrounds and biochemistry and so on and they develop incredible new fiber mixes or even Infinite fiber, for instance, which is technology to recycle fibers, because usually when you recycle a fiber, it will become shorter. And essentially, at some point, it'll be too short to spin a thread or you will lose the softness of the fiber. So they found solutions to keep on an infinite um, way to keep recycling them. But it can also be bacteria dyes or fruit based dyes or other ways. So I think there's just so much innovation happening in this space. And that's just so exciting. And I think, I mean, being, being a stubborn optimist <laughs> as I am, um, that's really where, you know, I, I, I hang my, my head on that hook, um, thinking that we can, through bringing science and innovation to the game, we can really make products more exciting, more durable, less impact, and, and yeah, and, and worth more for both people and planet.